there is a time for every activity. Perhaps you've heard this saying before. This well-known quote from the Bible is oftentimes misunderstood. But let's take a look at the scripture that this comes from. It's at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. There is an appointed time for everything, a time for every activity under the heavens, a time for birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what was planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to wail and a time to dance, a time to throw stones away and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to rip apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Many people feel that this scripture is talking about one's destiny or fate. They think that no matter what they do, the outcome has already been decided and they cannot do anything to change it. In actuality, this scripture contains an important principle. For every worthwhile endeavor, there is an appointed or most favorable time to produce the best results. Keeping that in mind, let's look back at that scripture to the B part of verse 2. It says, a time to plant and a time to uproot what was planted. Being from the Midwest, many of us have been around farmers, or perhaps we've even planted our own gardens. Now, can you imagine a farmer relying on fate, going out to the field in the middle of December, just randomly throwing seed anywhere it lands? Well, of course not. We know that that is not the case. Farmers are extremely precise on how and when they plant their seed. Through their study of climate, the soil, and the type of seed that they're planting, they know that they have a precise window of time to get the seed planted in order to be successful. These conditions and timetables for growing were put into place by Jehovah. When will the farmer know if his, if his harvest is to be successful? Well, the harvest is many months away, so we know that farming takes a great deal of patience. We as individuals are very similar. We can't rely on fate or some predetermined outcome to eventually happen. We need to study Jehovah's regulations and his appointed times so that we can make decisions that will not only benefit ourselves, but be according to Jehovah's will. This requires patience. Let us consider how reflecting on Jehovah's view of time can help us exercise patience. To build an average house, it takes approximately seven to nine months. It's important that everything be done correctly in order to make sure that the house is built strong and according to plan. Now, what if the builder starts to worry about a deadline? Perhaps winter is just a few months away. Well, he may give in to pressure and start to cut corners. That could affect the quality of the home, or even worse, the structural integrity. As the king of eternity, Jehovah never feels pressure to do things as if time were running out. How long did Jehovah spend building his masterpieces that we know as the universe? the earth, and even life that's on it. Well, we don't know an exact time, but from our point of view, it would have been a very long time. Our perspective of time does not match Jehovah's. What we do know is that his creative works were not rushed, but were developed progressively and to perfection. So what is the lesson for us? 
worthwhile things in life take time and require patience to achieve. Jehovah created us with the ability to comprehend that fact. Let's take a look at a scripture that helps us to see that. It's at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. And let's keep our Bibles open there. We're going to look at another verse in a moment. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has even put eternity in their heart. Yet mankind will never find out the work that the true God has made from start to finish. So when Jehovah, Jehovah created us, he put eternity into our heart. We don't want to die. We desire to live forever, to keep learning, to keep working. It's built into us. And how does Jehovah want us to feel about this opportunity that he gives us? Well, let's now look at chapter 3 and verses 12 and 13. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting in verse 12. I have concluded that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good during their life. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and find enjoyment for all his hard work. It is the gift of God. He wants us to enjoy our hard work and use that time to draw even closer to Him. Imagine how we would be able to exercise patience when we have an unlimited amount of time to achieve our goals. Unfortunately, we know that because of inherited sin and death, our current circumstances give us a limited amount of time to act wisely. It's important that we must act now to make any necessary changes in our lives or to pinpoint those spiritual goals and start working towards them. Because of our work view of time, this can be hard for us. These processes do not happen overnight. We must wait patiently on the results. Jehovah is the only one who can fully understand eternity. But the following video will help us to think about time from his perspective. Chantelle, and Melanie. 
She's applied for SBA a number of times, but hasn't been invited yet.